Welcome to It's Not About Sex. I'm Brianne McLaughlin. This show is all about giving the LGBTQ community a voice, breaking down barriers, exposing the unknown, and raising awareness and acceptance. By now, the idea of gay versus straight is understood and commonplace, well, for most of us, but when it comes to the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer community, there is still so much cloaked in mystery. For example, transgender. A transgender individual is defined as a person who identifies or expresses a gender identity that differs from the one which corresponds to the person's sex at birth. For instance, two and a half years ago, she was known as Taylor Gordashko. Those who knew her may not recognize him today. About two and a half years ago, I was finally able to, uh, to admit to myself and that's when things started to change. I started to become happier. And as soon as I told everybody, I don't think I've had a miserable day since. Love is love and you shouldn't discriminate. I don't know, every time I would uh, put on even pink clothing as a kid, I felt like almost like my heart was dropping in my chest, my stomach didn't feel completely right, especially when it came to putting on a dress. Well, that's just a basic human right. Yeah. People have the right to live as, as they want to live, not as other people think that they should live. Well, that's a, that's a personal right. I was being picked on because I was the tomboy. I wasn't like all the other girls who did their hair and makeup every single day. I usually had my hair back in a ponytail, hoodie and jeans. In the end, we're all just people, really, and we're attracted to what we're attracted to, and we feel certain things about our bodies, and we change things so that we feel better. I was worried about social ridicule. I didn't know how people were going to react. I didn't want to admit that I was different because I was already so different just in the way I dressed, the way I presented myself to people. I didn't want to be completely different than everybody else. I think it scares them, to be honest. I think it scares them that somebody has the confidence to do something like this, um, to pursue their dreams, because a lot of people, I'm sure, have things that they feel inside of them and are not confident enough to change them. In my mind, in everything about me, I am male. Whether or not people like it, that's their problem, really. Kudos to her, because it's a brave gesture, boy. It's not something, you know, the courage to have an, under, you know, an undertaking like that. Changing your whole life, your gender, your sexuality, like everything, like, God, the emotional scars she could have had with all this, and may still have, but uh, all you can be is supportive and, you know, be there for her. It is honestly like the best feeling in the world. I couldn't imagine spending the next 20 years of my life waiting for social acceptance to finally be able to transition. I know a lot of um, males to females do that. They wait till much older in life. I'm so happy that I can do this now. I don't have to spend the next 20 years of my life miserable. It makes me happy. <laughs> That's all that, you know, that he has the right to do that. To have the right to be who yeah, he who really you is. Be. Yeah, who you are. I accept the fact that I spent the first 20 years of my life as a female, and I don't think I would be the man that I am today without the, that experience. After the break, we're going to sit down with Tanner to talk about his experience transitioning from female to male. Um, and that's when I started to realize, wait, maybe there is a reason why I'm not like all the other girls around me. I felt like something was wrong. I was wearing this big poofy dress, my hair all done up in curls. I, I don't know, I just didn't feel comfortable. Even at six, like even at five and a half, six years old, I realized that something wasn't right.
Welcome back to It's Not About Sex. Before the break, we watched Tanner's remarkable story. At 18 years old, the then Taylor Gordashko decided she was no longer happy as a girl. Since then, Tanner has begun his transition to becoming a male, and he is here with us today to walk us through that experience. This is a crazy story. <laughs> I've never met anybody that's transgender before. So thank you for coming and being open to talk with us today, and maybe people will learn something, myself included. So my first question is, this must have been a huge decision, and how did you come to that point? Um, at around 18 years old, um, well actually, I'm gonna start farther back. At around six, I started to realize that something mm -hmm. was different about me. That um, I wasn't happy with your stereotypical female right. actions and behaviors and stuff like that. I uh, didn't like wearing dresses, didn't like playing with Barbies, nothing like that. Um, in high school, I finally learned the term transgender. Um, and that's when I started to realize, wait, maybe there is a reason why mm -hmm. I'm not like all the other girls around me. Um, and then at 18, uh, I met my current girlfriend and uh, she definitely helped me realize and come to terms with exactly what I needed to do to be happy with my life. So you felt like you had some support? Yeah, I did. Definitely had, had some support. And it wasn't just in your head, it was something that existed in the world. Yeah, definitely. I'm sure that was comforting to you. It was extremely comforting. <laughs> so, when I interviewed your grandparents, we watched in the story, um, they, they also recognized from a young age that you weren't girly. We, we saw the pictures, you look like, the, you're the cutest little girl. You have a little dress on, you well, know. Thank you. <laughs> you're, you're adorable. But they said your actions uh, kind of led that you you weren't a girl. You like to do more boy games, interact with more boy toys, all of those sorts of things. They also said that you were very miserable <laughs> as a girl. So tell me about that. Um, yeah, I, I definitely was. Uh, if a lot of the photos that you see from my youth, uh, a lot of those smiles are fake, mm -hmm. except for the ones where you know wearing the backwards hat and uh, playing out in the yard with. Tonka trucks and all those fun things, building with my dad. We built a shed when I was like nine, mm -hmm. something fun like that. Um, those were the, the happiest points in my life where I didn't have to fit those stereotypical female behaviors and actions. Um, but yeah, it, when it did come to being, you know, very stereotypical female, I was never truly happy. There was never, uh, never a real smile on my face when I had to wear a dress. Um, uh, yeah, I just I think the only way to describe it was I was miserable. I never was truly happy in those stereotypical roles. I, I guess it's it's fair to say after listening to you, I was going to ask you how do you know this isn't a phase? But you you say in the video you haven't had a miserable day since. I'm sure you've had bad days. Yeah, everybody has real. bad days. You've had a, okay, but you you've been happy with the life that you're living since you've started to make the change. So can you? Um, this is another whole another level of understanding and it would probably take hours and hours and years of education to completely understand it. But what are some of the physical um, changes that you've made so far on your path to becoming a male? Uh, well, the first uh, change I ever made was um, actually shaving my head. <laughs> we saw that photo, yeah. Yeah, this, that photo. Uh, I shaved my head for, the, uh, for a, a fundraiser uh, back in February three years ago, almost three years ago now. Okay. Um, and from there, I decided to not let my hair grow back out to a long length. Mm -hmm. um, very soon after that, I admitted to my girlfriend that I was not comfortable in the clothing that I was wearing. Um, so Im immediately, she was like, okay, let's go shopping. <laughs> we started looking through the, the female sections of the stores, and I know I wasn't really that excited, right. and it dawned on her, let's go to the men's section. And we bought me like, an entire new wardrobe that day just by flipping sections of the store. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, it was just mainly man mannerisms. Um, once I started to change those mannerisms, I s said it's about time I started contacting the professionals that I need to contact to actually start my transition. Okay, fair enough. You've mentioned Hannah a couple of times. <laughs> and while this is your story to tell, we're going to meet your girlfriend coming up after the break. Uh, in December, I had my hysterectomy. Uh, which is the removal of the ovaries, uterus, and fallopian tubes. So, we 
started dating, I was still in high school and Tanner had just graduated and I like t Taylor was very masculine and I was fine with that and so um, we started dating about six months into our relationship I kind of knew something was up and Taylor had been a pretty um, <laughs> depressed person <laughs> Welcome back, you're watching It's Not About Sex. Before the break, we spoke with Tanner Gordashko about his transition from female Taylor to in the process of becoming male Tanner. And we also mentioned that he's had some amazing supports along the way, and on that note, we're going to introduce his girlfriend, Hannah, welcome to the show. Thank you. So when I first met you, this was the most, no offense, but the most mind-blowing part of this entire story. <laughs> you were dating T Tanner when he was Taylor. Yes. You need to explain that one to us. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, we started dating. We met uh, in, while well, I was still in high school. We met through our high school drama program. Mm -hmm. And Taylor was a lesbian out in school and we started dating. And I personally identify as pansexual. Okay. Um, so, so you're not a lesbian turned by sexual no <laughs> no okay. no no um, so pansexual means that you're attracted to people's personalities rather than their gender um, so Taylor I was attracted to her personality um, as a female but the female part didn't really matter so as we started dating and about six months in um, it was pretty apparent to me when she came out to me as transgender I figured I already knew um, okay. so that part didn't really matter and like he said let's go shopping and we went shopping and the actual transition to a male and now are you going to be female male that part didn't really matter to me for, you know, for most people myself included i think that if my boyfriend came to me and said i'm going to become a girl that would be a, that would be a deal breaker for a lot of people yeah, <laughs> yeah like, I that's that intense that's yeah. <laughs> that's out there for for a lot of us to wrap our minds around so it, I have to ask you this this probably this couldn't have all been that easy was there any difficult part to this oh for sure yeah I mean honestly the biggest thing that I was worried about was so he said well I want to transition to male I would feel more comfortable and I said okay and then he started talking about the hormones and the surgeries and my first question was is this safe mm. like are the hormones right. going to, and then my biggest thing was, are the hormones changing from estrogen to testosterone, is that going to change your personality? Because that's, that, that would be a deal breaker for right, me. Right, like, right, you don't want to, like, e uh, well, that was my first, rage, but you no, know, that was my first much. thought. I was like, you're on testosterone, are you going to, okay. yeah. And you, in the break, we didn't get that far earlier, you said you, you shaved your head, but you've, you've gone farther than just shaving your head into the world of becoming a male. Yes, uh, eight and a half months ago I started taking testosterone. Okay. And back in December so I... So that's like hair, voice... Yeah, that will change um, like okay. some of my uh, body structure a little bit. Like okay. I don't have hips anymore. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've started to grow a little bit of facial hair. My voice has deepened a lot. Um, so those are some of the, the starting physical changes I've had. Uh, in December I had my hysterectomy, uh, which is the removal of the ovaries, uterus and fallopian tubes. And then in June, hopefully June, I'll be having my double mastectomy, which is the removal of my breasts. So for everyone wondering if this is a phase, it's obviously <laughs> not. <laughs> this is happening. It yeah. happened and there's really no turning back yeah, at this no, point. There's no point. There's no way I could have my own children anymore. We, s we watched in the video, you're an amazing girlfriend. Yeah. I'll just say that. Thank you. <laughs> Bravo. Good for you for being such a, you, know, you must know yourself really well in order to be able to help someone through a process, not help, but be with someone through a process like this. And, but when we saw on the video too that your grandparents are also very supportive, um, is there been any part going out in public that is, how has that been? Like going out and walking through the mall or going shopping for male clothes, has it been a little bit odd at points or? You know, the funny thing is is that I actually felt well, when I was dating Taylor, it was my first um, r relationship, real relationship mm -hmm. with a woman. And so I felt all the looks and stares from that. And 
e even though it's more widely accepted, like we were obviously a lesbian couple. It was very obvious that we were two women walking mm -hmm. down the mall or the street together. And once Taylor started transitioning to Tanner, um, it was funny because all of a sudden, even though we obviously have a very unique relationship dynamic, to everybody else, we just looked like a straight couple. So walking down the street, you know, um, You've any been kind of functions, we're, we're now boyfriend, girlfriend, and that's really normal. Well, that's good. It's getting, it's getting easier. Yeah. yeah. The stars are aligning for you guys. Perfect. Well, as we can see through this discussion, we, being transgender can come with a lot of emotion, confusion, change. When we come back, we're going to talk with someone who deals with this on a professional level every day. Uh, misgendering somebody or intentionally misgendering somebody can have devastating psychosocial or sorry psychological mental and emotional sort of impacts every time we get out of the shower standing in front of a mirror I couldn't look at myself below my, my neck. I didn't feel right, nothing. My, I felt so uncomfortable within my own skin that I couldn't even look at myself. Welcome back, you're watching It's Not About Sex. Before the break, we spoke with Tanner and his girlfriend about Tanner's transition from female to male. But now we'd like to introduce you to another guest. Tamara Gartner is a registered psychologist who specializes in supporting those who are going through a gender transition. Tamara currently works out of the Inclusive Counseling and Consulting Psychological Services here in Edmonton. I'm really excited to have you on the show. You, these questions are probably very basic <coughs> for you compared to what you know. Your, your knowledge is way, way beyond where we're starting here today, but we're just trying to build that basic knowledge on this show. So my first question to you, we kind of touched on it earlier, was is this, is this a choice for Tanner? It's far beyond a choice. Uh, I see gender uh, professionally as an innate sort of concept. I think that we, we are all aware of our gender. Um, I think that people that identify as transgender often will say things like, I feel different or I felt different. Um, the whole idea of incongruence between their anatomical sex or their assigned sex at birth mm -hmm. and their identity. And it's really that incongruence that leads to them feeling as though they're different. Um, you know, and, and I guess I welcome people to, or invite people to think about their own gender. How do you know your gender? How do we know if we're male or female? Right, so there's, this, there's like male things that I just don't ever wanna do and I have no interest in it, so I'm probably not transgender, as far as I know. Well, I point. think that, you know, the the things that we do, whether we identify them as masculine or mm -hmm. feminine, are just the activities. I right. think that identity is here. So whether we feel male or female really is here. So I never have the feeling to want to have male parts, is, is what you're getting at. It's it Not necessarily male parts, but uh, feeling male, uh, knowing that you're not belonging in the right body. Okay. Uh, it's an innate sense. You're just in the wrong body. You yeah. just know I'm in the wrong body and I want out. I want to change. Mm. So that being, that has to be so difficult. For, like we talked about earlier, he didn't know, even hadn't even heard the term transgender until you were in high school. You thankfully had some really good supports in your life. So what is, what are some of the most difficult parts of being transgender that you see in your practice? Mm -hmm. Well, we don't quite understand transgender issues at this point. We're much farther along in gay and lesbian issues right. in our society. So often what that produces is way more distress and, uh, and adversity for people that are identifying as transgender. Uh, the psychosocial stressors of anxiety, depression, bullying, self-harm, suicidal ideation, internalized transphobia. Many of these things are uh, are products of society not truly understanding what it means to be transgender. Does a lot of that fear, we know, like I said, he, uh, he had very good support system, mm -hmm. good girlfriend, good, good grandparents. Does a lot of that fear come from obviously what other people think? And is it a, is it a really um, psychological process and difficulty for people around someone that's making a transition? 
Yeah, I think when people come out as, as transgender, I mean, it, it can be very liberating, but it can also be very t uh, terrifying. Yeah. And I think that it can be shocking for families and they can go through stages of grief. They can go through stages of, of not necessarily using the right pronouns. Um, maybe not acknowledging publicly that a person has transitioned. Uh, maybe uh, not using the preferred name, not using the preferred pronoun. Many of, the, of those things can get in the way of somebody's authentic sort of presentation and identity. Okay, so that is a significant part of making a transition is pronouns. What, for those who don't <coughs> understand what we mean when we say that, yeah. what is a pronoun and why is it so vital to understanding the subject? Well, a pronoun really is uh, recognizing and acknowledging someone's self-identification. And so pronouns are, uh, are the process whereby somebody identifies as he, she, uh, they, them. Um, and I think that when we use the pronouns that are preferred or when somebody asks us to use the pronouns that are preferred, we're really honoring their identities. We're really respecting their um, authentic selves. And so if we don't do that, that can create um, really vast psychosocial stressors. Mm. Uh, misgendering somebody or intentionally misgendering somebody can have devastating psychosocial or sorry psychological mental and emotional sort of impacts. So my pronoun would be she. She and her. She and her and yours Tanner's is now it was she and her and now it is he she and, and him his. and yeah. his and him. <clears throat> okay so while interviewing your grandparents and your soccer coach we had this came out like it reared its head a, a few times. So let's take a look and then we'll talk about this clip after. Her name is, or, yeah, her name is Tanner now, sorry. Uh, I've always known her as Gordy. I mean, that was her nickname from when I met her in 2005. Is Tanner patient with uh, that process? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah she understands. So. He, there you are, he understands. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so we know that they're both totally accepting of this change, but they're, they're struggling in making the pronoun, the pronoun shift. So how does it make you feel to watch them make that mistake? Um, in the beginning, it hurt a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, as I've grown to accept myself, um, I've become more okay with understanding that the, my grandparents are in their 70s. It's gonna happen. They've also spent the first 20 years of my life knowing me as one thing. I can't expect them to you know, instantaneously make that jump. How can I be a good support to Tanner? How, what, what makes it good support, uh, some, someone that makes them feel like they re really understand what they're going through? How can we work on that as a society to help people like Tanner live the life that they truly feel comfortable in? I think it starts with open and honest dialogue. I think it starts with communication. Uh, I think, you know, we often will just assume gender. We will get stuck in the binaries of gender, male or female, nothing in between. I think that when we're uncertain, we can ask, which pronouns do you prefer? Which pronouns do you use? Um, if we're coming from a place of genuine sort of respect and inquiry and curiosity, uh, it's fine. It's absolutely fine to ask those questions. I think also just, I think that being really true to that person about the struggle and, and telling them how you're struggling with their mm. uh, transition and your own adjustment. I think it's reciprocal. So not only a trans person sharing, but the, the loved ones sharing as well. Right. Um, and just letting trans people know that you're there to support them and how can you be supportive, I think, is crucial. So if you don't understand, ask. Think about what you're going to ask before you, you do it. Yeah. And hopefully the other person will walk you through that process. Yeah. Right, perfect, thank you. Well, I'd really like to thank you all so much for being here. It's people like you sharing your stories that are helping create a more inclusive society for all of us, raising awareness, education, all of those things we're not gonna understand unless we talk about it. Today, we discussed the topic of transgender. Changing sexes, as you can see, has both mental and physical components, ones that require patience and understanding. If you or someone you know is questioning their gender or sexual identity, we leave you with some local organizations and resources to contact for more information. Thank you to both of our guests, all of our guests, and thank you for joining us on this episode if it's not about sex. Make sure you follow us on Twitter and send us your comments at Shaw TV Edmonton, hashtag it's not about sex. We'll see you next time.